Hi guys, so this is the tutorial for the vintage postcard creation in Photoshop. Hopefully this video will help you along. Um, you have instructions on your desk that look like this. They are also on today's blog for misspollardphotography.com. So follow along, it's about a 23 step tutorial. It is pretty involved, but it's gonna help you understand how to navigate the typography and the text layer in um, Photoshop, as well as the adjustment layers we're going to add. And just get you more familiar with it now that we're kind of getting away from using Pixlr and we are sort of married to Photoshop now. Um, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Head to Schoology first though and download the nine elements that I have located in there. And I got all of those images from unsplash.com. Gonna go ahead and share my screen. It is right there. Cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna move this bad boy out of the way. All right, so from here, we're gonna go to new file and your specs for this are gonna be six by four with 300 PPI. And we're just gonna keep our background as white right now. Um, just a little note about this background color. After we do this assignment um, together, you are gonna branch out and do your own, make your own postcard based on whatever location you choose. Um, when you do that, you're gonna start with the same specs, but I would prefer you to change your background color to gray. Reason being is if you decide to do some text in white, obviously you're not gonna be able to see white on white. Um, that's just a side note. We're gonna keep our specs as is for this. Um, six by four, 300 PPI, background white, click create. You are here and we are on step four. If you're following along, we're going to choose the font impact. So we're going to choose our text tool first, which is right here. And again, the font is impact. And I'm going to go ahead. Ooh, that's not impact. Impact is sort of a pedestrian font. Um, we're not going to use any fancy fonts for this, but uh, impact is a thicker font. And part of this uh, creation of the postcard will have an image within a word. So giving ourselves a thicker font will allow that image to shine through. So I'm gonna go here to impact, choose that. And for my font size, I'm gonna choose 72. I'm gonna click right here. In all caps, I'm gonna type California. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make it black. So again, everything up here on this top toolbar controls um, the text feature. So once you click on text, this pops up just like it does in Pixlr. Um, I can also move this just like I can in Pixlr by using this tool up here, this arrange tool or this move tool. And it doesn't really matter where we place it, but I'm gonna place it right here for now. From here, we're gonna move on and we're gonna start placing images within this word. And I'm gonna show you a really cool technique to do that that I didn't know about until recently. Um, my layer panel is located up here. And from here, I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna add a layer and I'm gonna to go to file, place, embedded. So again, file, place, embedded. And I'm gonna open up one of those images that we just downloaded from Schoology. If I could find it, that'd be great. Where did it go? Where's all my stuff? Where are my photos? Oh, I put them in a folder because I was trying to be organized. Good job, Ms. Pollard. Um, there they are. I'm gonna start with my palm tree photo and it's gonna open up like this, right? I'm gonna size it down and I'm gonna place it over cattle, C-A-L. Again, just pull it down, press done. And as you can see, it's populated my layer panel right here. I'm gonna make sure that it's highlighted in gray. I'm gonna click my option key on my keyboard. This is where it gets cool. Hold down your option key and you're gonna see this little icon pop up. It's a little arrow with a square and I'm gonna click on it and it blends it for me. It like masks it for me which is really, really cool. And then I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go to file, place embedded. I'm gonna open up the photo of my poppies.
And again, I'm going to size it down a little bit. I want it to cover up my eye. Where are my I O R? Let's do that. Click done. Again, you see it in my layer panel. It's highlighted in gray. I hold down my option button and I hover over, just hover with your cursor until you see this pop up, this little arrow with the square, and then click on your keep on your trackpad. Just click and it blends it for you. Mwah, beautiful. I'm gonna do it one more time. File place embedded. Let's open up the photo of the ocean. I'm gonna pull that over towards the end of my word. I'm gonna size it down a little bit, place it right there, click done. Again, it's right here in my layer panel. I hold down my option key. Remember we're working with Max, so you're holding down your option key. Hover over that layer. You're gonna see that square in that, that arrow. I just click on my trackpad, blends it for me. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, that would have saved us a lot of time uh, doing a couple of our previous projects. Um, so from here, if you're following along on your directions, we're going to go ahead and go down to uh, bu -bu 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 our text layer, our text layer here in our layer panel where the word California is. Click on that. And now click directly on the letter T of that layer panel. So I'm in my layer panel. I'm going to click on the letter T. And it will highlight my or sort of uh, select my word California. What we're going to do now is sort of give it a vintage -y feel like we have on postcards that say greetings from California. The word California typically is sort of bent upwards, curved upwards. And now that we've done this, where we've, we've clicked on this T and you see it bolded in black, we're going to come up here. You should have this option here where my cursor is at, this little uh, create warped text, this little T icon. When you click on it, you're going to see that you have some options for style. And the one I'd like you to choose for this is rise. We're going to choose rise. And I'm going to adjust the bend of this down to like, you know, 25, 27, 29, something like that. This is 29 and click okay. And then I'm just gonna click on my word California to sort of bring it back. And as you can see, it's got that cool little bend to it now, just like our vintage postcards do. You might notice now too, that our pictures that were within the word are a little wonky. All you have to do to adjust them is click on their layer and just move them. That one looks pretty good. I'll click on the layer of the poppies, just move it down a little bit. And again, you can even rotate these, these layers so they sort of line up a little bit better. And I'm gonna click again on my California palm trees. That looks pretty good. So far, so good, right? Um, I'm gonna click again on my word California. And if we're following along on my steps, this is step 14. Um, I've clicked on the word California. I would like to add an outline to this. Um, so I'm going to go here to effects, which is right underneath um, your layer panel. You might see effects above it. That's not the one I want you to use. I want you to use the one below it. So effects and stroke. When I click on that, this um, pops up here. And the color that I'm going to outline with is in this box. I'm going to choose black. Feel free to choose whatever color you like. And then to adjust my size, I'm gonna kind of move this, but I'm gonna keep it very thin because again, I want those words to pop, or the images to pop out more than anything. So I'm gonna keep it at three. I would recommend keeping the size of that outline between one and five. And there we go, it's pretty clean. Um, we're gonna move on. We're on to step 16 if you're following along. We are going to add sort of a vintagey old paper underneath this word. So I'm gonna to go to my layer panel right here. I'm gonna click again on my add button and I have a layer right here. I'm gonna to go to file, place embedded and I'm gonna pull up that old vintagey paper that I got off of, I think, Bechdizi. I'm gonna size it so that it fills up my whole canvas and then I'm gonna drag it below everything, um, it, it'll end up being right above your background. So it's at the very bottom of your layer panel. And it looks like that, which is 
pretty cool. We're, we're getting there. It's starting to look vintagey. Um, we are on to step 18, 18 and 19. Um, we're going to do the same thing again. We are going to add another layer, file, place embedded, just like we did before with our old paper. But this time we're going to open up our vintage beach picture. And it's going to look like this. I'm going to size it so that it fills up most of my canvas. And I'm going to drag that as well towards the bottom of my layer panel. So it lands underneath everything. But as you can see right now, I'm losing the word California because I just added that vintage beach layer. So with that selected, vintage beach is selected. It's grayed right here. I'm going to lower my opacity. And that is located right up here above the layer panel. So just lower it a little bit um, just so we can still see the word California. So I have it at like 39% right now, and that's pretty good. Um, so from here, I want to blend this in. You can see the edges of that vintage beach layer, and I don't want that. I want sort of an old, worn down, authentic look. So again, I've got that vintage beach layer highlighted. It's gray, so we're telling Photoshop that that's the layer we're altering. And the easiest way to sort of blend the edges is to use the eraser tool right here, which looks exactly like the eraser tool in Pixlr. I'm gonna click on it right there. Again, that opens up my toolbar up here that, that has all my controls for my eraser. I'm gonna choose a decent size eraser. And I'm gonna choose sort of a cool eraser um, under special effect brushes. Remember, we have different eraser brushes. Um, don't always get stuck using the same one. Play around with it, see what they do. I like this one here, it's called Kyle's Spatter Brushes. I'm gonna use that one. And it's gonna ask me, um, the smart object must be rasterized. So remember rasterize means we're sort of um, pulling the pixels apart so that we can alter them. So press okay. I'm gonna hover that over the edge of my vintagey beach layer and just sort of blend it in so that it looks like it's part of that old paper. And it looks really cool like that. I love that. Um, we're almost done, so hang in there. From here, we're gonna add two more text layers. One of them will say, greetings from. The other one will say, the golden state, which is sort of our tagline for California. So I come over here. Um, I like to go to the top of my layer panel, just click on the top layer. Come to my text layer right here. I'm going to choose a cursive font. Um, a good one is Snell Roundhand, but that's a that's a pretty cursive font. I'm going to choose a font size that's font size that's around 36, and I'm going to keep it black. And right here, I'm going to type, oops, and not in all caps. That's not good. Greetings from, and again, I can move my text layer. Easy peasy. Just use that arrange tool at the top left corner right here. Um, but I wanted to curve the way that California does. So again, I'm going to come here to my, my greetings from layer. And if I click on that T, I will see that this text warp pops up again. I click on that. This is exactly um, what we did for the word California. I come down to style. I hit rise. And I sort of adjust it so that it it lands just along the top of the curve of the word California. Boom. I'm gonna add my tagline. Actually, move that up a little bit. I'm gonna add my tagline. We will say, add, an, add another text layer here. Um, and I don't wanna use cursive. I'm just gonna use a simple, uh, a simple font. Let's use something simple. Let's use... Oh, that looks fine. We'll do the golden state. Might want that a little bit smaller. Again, I'm going to move it right down here and double click on it. You can change the color because it says the golden state. I'm going to make it golden, obviously. But because it's golden, I'm going to have to outline it. So I'll, I'll press OK. Um, oops. I will go ahead and click on my T and click effects. Again, outlining it just the way we did with the word California, click stroke. Black outlines, probably the best. Click okay, and now it's there. So greetings from California, the golden state. Um, 
second to last step. We're almost there. We're going to add one more element. So I'm going to go to my add button in my layer panel, file place embedded. I'm going to place that poppy since we are, that's our, our state flower. I'm going to put it right there. And it's kind of got a vintage vibe to it and I kind of like it. So I'm going to place it right there. And that's it. I'm, I'm going to flatten my image. So I have all these layers. I'm going to come up here to my layer panel where the three lines are. Um, remember in Pixlr, you would see three dots and we'd flatten. So three lines, flatten. And this still doesn't feel very vintagey to me. I feel like it needs what we would call an overlay or a filter. Um, so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to add an adjustment layer. And I do that by clicking right here on this little icon of the circle. And I'm going to go down to where it says photo filter. I'm going to click on that. And from your window option up here, make sure you have styles checked off. That's just a cool, um, it gives you some cool options. And under styles, you'll see basics, natural, fur, go down to fabric for me. And there's this really cool linen fabric and it just has a lot of texture to it. So if I add that up here where it says opacity, I'm gonna lower the opacity and it kind of just gives it a cool, tied together, texturized, vintagey look. Um, and I have my opacity at 29%. Now I can flatten again, which again, my three lines in my layer panel, I flatten. And I'm gonna save this, file, save as, vintage, post hard. This tells me where I'm saving it. I'm saving it in a folder, or you can choose to save it somewhere else, maybe your desktop. Please have the format as JPEG. If you don't see the option for, for that, excuse me, if you don't see the option for JPEG, allergies are fun, um, it's because you didn't flatten your image. So make sure you see JPEG there and click save. A decent high, uh, high five set file size and press OK. And then you can submit that to Schoology. But that is pretty much it. I hope that helped. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you feel like I'm going too quick, go ahead and click that little gear and slow it down. But if you have questions, go ahead and email them to me uh, through Schoology is fine or nicole.pollard at lausd.net. And that's all I got for you. Have a great day. Bye.